This is a 1949 Chevy, uh, all original one. One of those uh, antiques on wheels that we find here in the city. So it re represents what Havana is today. It's a city that's, that has, you know, that stood still in time, it's still in the in the 50s. We were still in 1959, 62, 63. And that's the beauty of the city. And, and, and eventually all of this is going to change. Looking to drive some of that change is Hugo Cancio, a Cuban-American entrepreneur who frequently returns home, carefully watching the wheels of change in motion. There are real estate developers from, my, from the United States flying to Cuba very quietly, you know, taking notes and taking photos and, and, and uh, putting together their Cuba investment plans. And, and, and I don't blame them. It's, it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of opportunities here. Those with the most to gain immediately are probably the major U.S. hotel chains. Marriott, Hyatt, Hilton. They've all expressed interest in jumping into the market. Eyeing up the shabby government-run hotels that are desperately crying out for serious investment. What happens to the Riviera? It's one of the most famous hotels in Havana. Look, you know, unfortunately, this hotel, for some reason, has not been renovated. Eventually, some, someone will acquire this, this beautiful hotel and turn it into what it should have been a long time ago and preserve its beauty. Flood the market or keep it closed? Preserve history or cave in to the developers' dollars like the rest of the Caribbean? I see huge amounts of potential, but I also see huge amounts of potential destruction. T-shirt shops, bars, overdevelopment. I, I doubt that's gonna happen uh, for now. Um, that's not what the majority of the Cuban people want. Hey, listen, they may want to see a Walmart, a Nike store, an Apple store, but nothing in excessive. You know, people want to preserve, you know, some of the values. Capitalism may be some way off. Yet the green shoots of regeneration can already be seen from one end to the other along the Malecon. So we have on the, on the front here, we have two re restored, restored beautiful buildings. Beautiful buildings. And, and within, then, right on the seafront. That right on the seafront. And then you see an old beat up building right here that is being prepared to be restored. So it gives you exactly the idea of where the authorities are going with this. They're not, they could have turned this building down. But instead, they're getting it ready to restore the property. So it tells you that we're not going to see big high-rise condos here for a long, long time. Best intentions aside, the temptation to take billions of dollars in foreign investment, it will be difficult to turn down. Look, I want Havana to preserve its beauty as it is, but I'm also not naive. Uh, I know things will change. I know we'll see some scrapes, uh, some huge condos and hotels along the Malecon, but I still want to preserve this. I don't think you can. Of course, of course we can. We, we, you know, the, we, ha we have done it and, you know, for, for 50, 60 years. Uh, we, the Cuban could have allowed foreign investors to come in and transform the city many years ago. What's going to change now? For now, the engines are ready. Plotting, planning for all potential outcomes. No one wants to stick their necks out too far. Everyone just wants to be ready for when the race finally starts. Now, why have you brought me here? This is prime time, prime real estate here, prime property here. Are you ready to build here? Um, if I would be allowed, yes, of course. You got the money? Yes. You got the backers? Yes. Definitely. You got the you got the property in mind? No. I don't believe you. <laughs>like the hotel industry, competition amongst the airlines at Havana's Jose Marti International Airport will quickly intensify. The major US carriers are looking at new routes once the rights have been established. For now, Panama's Copa is the largest foreign carrier flying into Cuba. With six flights a day to Havana, it's a new niche market linking the United States and Cuba via the Panama City hub.
So right now we're selling through our website right now. Uh, uh, so that's the only channel that's right now selling a con the connectivity from the U.S. to Cuba through Panama. It's going up. Uh, so, you know, we could say it's going up uh, fivefold or tenfold. But as an airline, uh, do you have that as a prospect and a route for the future? To be very frank and honest, for a while. It will be very effective until Cuba and the U.S. open up their air traffic rights and U.S. companies start flying direct from their hubs in the U.S. to Havana and other cities in Cuba. When that happens, then there will be little need to connect through Panama. The hope for COPA is that transfers in Panama will be the added value to give them an edge. Panama is a great tourist destination. It's growing. It's doing really well. It has some common things with Cuba. It's also different in some aspects. So right now, a passenger that's going from the U.S. to Cuba actually gets a free stopover in Panama. So they can do both. And that's kind of like double whammy. Copa's main focus will remain its South and Central American passenger base. Do you worry that that could be threatened? And I don't, uh, that once the U.S. majors come in. Mexico to Havana might come via Panama at the moment. You don't want to see it going via Dallas. Correct, correct. And we won't because the, our main advantage is Panama's geography. People are not going to go up to the U.S. all the way north to then come down to Cuba when Panama is right smack underway. You've been to Cuba obviously many times. Correct. What's your gut feeling for how big the potential is? Well, that's a, you know, that's a great question because, you know, we've got to be careful here. Uh, uh, Cuba is a country that needs a lot and that still has to develop. We cannot think of what we want to get out of Cuba because if, we, if we're only thinking of what the U.S. is going to get out of Cuba, then, you know, it's not going to work that way. You know, if we help them develop and do better, then it'll be an interesting market. In a moment, from farm to factory, lighting up a Cuban icon.